question to me just to read it. And I just want you to, if you want to turn to your Bible, you can. But this, the wording in this message Bible is just so tremendous. And I'm going to share a little bit about what water uh, baptism means. And for us old timers, we need to listen and make sure that we are participating in it. Well, let me read this. And the title is, is, When Death Becomes Life. When Death Becomes Life. How many of you know there is no real life until death takes part? Isn't that amazing? How many have ever planted a garden? And unless that seed died, then it abides alone. But if it dies, life comes out of death. Our Lord died, and life came forth. Resurrection came forth. So many people are crying out for life, but they're not willing to let that old man die out in their life. They still live by that old man and his desires. And I believe one thing in this fast is going to sort of check some of those desires of the old man where the inner man can come forth and be more dominant in our lives. Now just listen to this. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving. Now, the thought when Paul was writing this down, some folks says, well, you know, where sin abounds, grace abounds more. And that's true. But they had the attitude, they had the attitude is, well, if sin abounds and grace, there's plenty of grace to cover it, why not just go ahead and keep sinning, having a good time? Glory to God. And Paul said, wait a minute, you don't understand. You died to that old way of living. You died when you were water baptized. What God did to, for you, in you, was that you died to that old way of thinking, that old way of, of doing things, living like the world lives, everything for myself and nobody, nothing for anybody else, just a selfish, self-centered life. And Paul says, no, listen, yes, grace is there if you do sin. If you do, we have an advocate with the Father, and you can go to him, and you can get it all cleared up if you confess it. But sin is not to be a dominant factor in your life as a Christian because you died with Christ. You died to sin. Okay? Now, you've got to accept that by faith. Amen. All right. Now, listen to what he says. So, uh, what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we left the country where sin is solvent, how can we still live in our old house there? See, have we really left it? And that's the, that's the thing. In our minds, we've got to make sure that we've left. And, it, and in this, it calls the old country. Or did you realize we, we uh, packed up and left there for good? The old way of living, the old way of thinking, uh, we've left that. Uh, we think on the Lord now. We don't, we don't argue. We don't fuss. We don't fight. We don't quarrel. We don't speak harsh to people anymore. Why? Because all of that is part of what? The old life. Now, there's times you make, may make a, a, a mistake and, 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 and speak harshly to your mate. But you know what? If I did that, you know what would happen to me? Instantly, I would repent. Instantly, I can't do nothing like that. Instantly, if I spoke harsh to Susan, the Holy Spirit lives in me, and I would instantly come under the authority of God's Word and say, Honey, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Don't I practice that, darling? And Susan practices that. So listen to me very careful. Sometimes, listen, sometimes when you're born again, the old habits of talking, the old habits of thinking, the old habits are hard to break. That's why I like this 21-day fast, because they say, it takes 21 days to, to stop an old habit and start a new habit, okay? So God, through Paul, is trying to say, listen, you don't have to uh, live like you used to. Undisciplined lives. Uh, your life now is disciplined. You know, you know exactly Sunday morning where you're going to be. Because Saturday night you're preparing for Sunday morning. Susan got my outfit re ready last night. Uh, she uh, got everything ready for her. Uh, she had to fix three outfits for me last night. This outfit this morning, uh, the outfit that I'm going to baptize the boys uh, in this morning, and the outfit to go to the, my, my grandson's uh, party.
party. And it, it's all ready, and there's no confusion. I know what to wear, and we just flow, flow, flow. Amen? So, hallelujah. And, he, Paul, and Paul says that is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin. That's what the, in the Message Bible calls it, old country of sin or the old habit of sinning. Behind, when we come up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace, a new life in a new land. Now, let's love that. If you're familiar with the King James, then you could see this in your mind. And, uh, and I know that many of you have read that in Romans 6 many, many times. Now, that's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the barrel of Jesus. And when we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. So, the water baptism shows a picture to yourself, and to everybody else, that an inward work of grace has been done in you, in you when you accepted Christ as your personal Savior and you realize you, 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 do have not, you don't have any obligation whatsoever to, to obey that outer man. Okay, the outer man. If you read the Bible, there's the inner man. That's, that's our spirit and the outer man. The outer man is to be a servant of the inner man. Because that outer man just won't want to do certain things that God tells us to do. The outer man, you know, I remember when I first started out in, in, in uh, uh, being a Christian, you know, and uh, Susan, bless her heart, she got it all at count. She got it all when she was born again. <laughs> Look at her, she shakes her head. You know, she could tithe, and, 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 you know, I had to strain at it, and uh, I had to groan and wrestle with the angel. And, and, and how many have how been there? On, how many's life been on my side? You just got to, huh? huh? All, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, come on. Don't lie to me. Uh, what do you mean tithe? I'm not going to tithe. You know, how can I live if I tithe, you know? How can you live without tithing? Now you, that's what you find, okay? No big thing. You know, you, you can't outgive God. But see, that old man is in his little thinking, in his intimate uh, thinking it all through. And uh, you got to let that go down in the water, rise up, and walk in faith. Amen. Begin to walk in obedience. Everybody say obedience. obedience. Folks, let me tell you something. It's simple and it's not complicated, and you just, you just mark obedience. When the, when, the, when, the, when the Word of God says forgive, you forgive. When the Word of God says bless, you bless. When, when the Word of God says go to the second mile, you go to the second mile, knowing that God is going to strengthen you, God is going to bless you, you're not going to miss out on anything if you obey God's Word. But if you don't obey God's Word, the devil will have a field day with you all the days of your life. You'd be like what I call a yo-yo Christian, up one day, down the next. And I've been there. I've walked the yo-yo road. How many's ever walked the yo-yo road? Let me see your hands. Oh, be honest. I know you have, even if you didn't raise your hands. I wasn't born yesterday. I deal with hundreds of people in my ministry. I'm almost 74. I tell you, when you get up in years, you know a little something, don't you? You learn a little something. Yeah. But settle in your mind once and for all that you're not going to allow that old creation, that old man. Because see, one day, see, this body's not redeemed yet. One day in the future, this old man, this, this, this uh, body of ours will be, will be uh, resurrected into a glorified body. Woo! You talking about having a good time? I believe we'll be able to explore the universe. I wonder what's out there on the other side of the sun. Why don't you just fly out and take a look? God's created all the universe for somebody to enjoy. So we're just not going to be sitting down here uh, on the earth, but we'll be in a glorified body. But until then, you've got to learn to discipline this outer man. 
Now, let's be honest. I want everybody to say, I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to raise my hand. How many, when you sit down to a good meal, you eat too much? <laughs> Whoa! You know, no condemnation, but see, God is bringing light to us. And, you know, I was talking to this crowd over here. <laughs> Susan, put your, put your earplugs in. I, want you, I don't want you to hear this. See, it's e how many of you know it's easy to blame other folks? So Susan, you know, you, you, I used to, you know, I used to work hard and sweat and get out there and take trees and pull them up by the roots and take one saw, pick the tree up, saw it in half, throw it over there. <laughs> I mean, I don't do that no more. Sweat coming off of me like this. In a day's time, I had to change three shirts, you know, sweating out there, pulling trees up by the roots. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One saw in this hand, an axe in this one. Sweat. Sit down. Susan fixes has this big plate for me. My girls bought me a big plate. Yeah, it's a big plate. This is what you feed daddy with. She fills that thing up with food, and I sit down and eat it. I go out there, and I work all those calories off. Now, she's still got the plate that I'm set before, and she fills that thing up. <laughs> she's filling that thing. I say, honey, you've got to help me in this. Because, see, I come from the old crowd. Back during the, the Depression, you ate everything that was on the plate. You licked it. You ate the corn cob. And if you didn't eat it, we won't go into that. But <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, te <laughs> I'm telling you, and, 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 but you have to learn to, to discipline because there is so much food. Now, no need for us to curse the food because we've got to have some food to live. We've still got to have food. But we're talking about discipline. We're talking about that breaking some of the old habits. Now, a lot of times it's not that people are bad folks. They just got bad habits. How many, how many of you pick your nose at the table? Let me just raise your hand. Yeah. Remember, God sees you. Yeah. We got... How many got a, listen, how many got a bad habit of going to bed late? Oh, look at the hands. At least you're honest. Well, we had to break that habit, too. See, discipline is important. I think God is uh, underlining that. All right. So we become disciplined. And then once you become disciplined, uh, can I step on any toes? How many w w wants me to step on a few toes? Let me see your hands. Okay. How many don't? Those that don't want. All right, put your, put your ears put right in there. Going to bed, going to bed um, the right time where you can get up. It's Sunday morning. You went to bed, you know, at the right time. So you're here on time for Sunday school, for prayer meeting, for church, re ouch, ready to worship God. Flowing together as a body. That's, see, that's submitting yourself one to another. How many of you know that outer man don't want to submit to nobody but itself? Come on, church, I've been there. Every once in a while I have to kick him out of the house. Submit yourself one to another. Well, if I submit myself to you, you might ask me to do something I don't want to do. Oh, now you're, now, you're, now you're picking up your cross and following the Lord. So God will tell us sometimes to do some things that we don't want to do just to let that old man get crucified a little bit because all he wants to do is do what he wants to do. Now, you know I'm telling you the truth. I have to deal with him too. See, you say, Bob, what did the old man look like? Well, I don't know what your old man looks like. 